Enjoy with your headphones for a better listening experience. Please watch till the end of the video to have the most scariest part of the story. What is the scariest thing a child has ever said to you? When my son was around three or four, I was getting him and his sister ready for bed. I was having a very rough time emotionally, don't remember why now, my kids are adults now. As I was walking down the hallway with my daughter, my son came out of his room, the lights were off as I had already put him in bed. As he steps into the hallway, he is looking back into the dark room and says, okay. I looked because there were only the three of us in the house and then asked him, who are you talking to, dot. He replied, Aunt Sherry says she loves you. I froze for a second, then looked in the room and said, I love you too, dot. Sherry was the name of my older sister who passed away at three months old. I had never told my children about her as they were too young to understand. I obviously never met my sister, I was born five years after she passed. My daughter also would make comments when she was around three or four about her great Grammy visiting her. She would describe the lady that would come to talk with her sometimes. She told me the lady sometimes wore a blue nightgown, sometimes yellow and sometimes purple. I bought my grandmother nightgowns in those colors when she was in her final stages of cancer. When I was growing up my grandmother would always ask me, are you my girl, whenever she would give me a hug. My daughter told me the lady would ask her, are you my girl? I knew it had to be my grandmother. She passed away several years before I had my daughter. This morning my kids were riding toys around our house. My four-year-old was near the kitchen and my 2.5-year-old was at the front of the house right under the steps that lead upstairs to our bedrooms. He lost it. Started screaming and crying ran to me and kept pointing towards the steps. He started to say there was a scary cat. My four-year-old comes running to us. He very calmly looks at his brother and goes, does it have red eyes? My 2.5-year-old responded with, yes. My kids have no idea that when we bought our house the owner had been deceased for three months before anyone found him. His cats had been feasting on him. The house sat empty for two years after that, before we bought it at an auction without ever setting foot inside nor knowing its history. We did totally gut and renovate the entire house. When my daughter was maybe two to three years old, I was going to the bathroom and sitting on my phone scrolling Facebook reading friends posts. She was hanging out over by the open door just doing her thing. As I was reading posts I came across an old acquaintance's post that used to live in my hometown, both of us lived in various parts of the country then. I hadn't talked to this person since teen years, and they were not associated with my life at all. As I'm quickly reading his post in my head as I scroll through my daughter unexpected says, who's Dave? I instantly froze and quickly glanced over to her and said, what did you say? Who's Dave? She repeats. I ask her why she said that, and she doesn't have much of a reply. The post I was reading in my head at that very moment was a person I haven't spoken to in 10 to 15 years named Dave. It kind of freaked me out at the moment as me and her weren't talking at all, both doing our own thing and out of nowhere she asked me that as if we were somehow connected on some wavelength, like she was connected to my random thoughts as I scrolled through reading posts. The thing is I tried to logically justify it happening, but she doesn't know this person, nor anyone named Dave at all, no reason to even randomly say the name as it wasn't part of her vocabulary or anything like that. I'll always remember that now 10 to 11 years ago. It definitely made me think children have a more open wavelength to things that tend to fade as we grow older. It was the weirdest, woo, moment I've experienced that left me baffled and semi-shook that I couldn't logically explain. My seven-year-old daughter took me to her bedroom where she had dolls and teddies on the floor. She said, Daddy, I gave this doll this book to read and I went over here to play, when I turned around, this teddy bear was reading it. There was already some weird stuff going on that my wife and I hadn't even acknowledged to each other as we were kind of both in private denial. The number of inexplicable incidents that happened in the 18 months we lived there are great campfire stories and now that the kids have grown up they have shared their stories too, 
since we played it down at the time so not to scare them. We never felt in danger or under threat and my wife stayed many times on her own with the kids whilst I was traveling. The one that still makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up was when I was in the kitchen and the kids were in the rumpus room in the basement. My wife came to me and asked if I had been in our daughter's room in the last five minutes, to which I said, no, why? She then asked if any of the kids had been upstairs, to which I said, no, they would have had to go past me in the kitchen, so I would have known. My wife then took me to my daughter's room and showed me my daughter's dolls, sitting, neatly in a circle on the floor. My wife said that she vacuumed that floor five minutes beforehand and the dolls were not on the floor then. Which one do you want next, the curtains blowing out, the kids' footsteps running down the hallway, the shoes that kept moving location, the iPod that appeared in the hallway when I was the only one in the house all day, my son seeing, Einstein, in the basement. The fact that my daughter wouldn't sleep in her own bedroom. A friend related this to me about their son then aged two to three. Their kid woke up in the wee hours and began searching the house for something with the lights out. The friend turned on the lights and the kid screamed at them to turn the lights off, the light hurts them and insisted that he was going to find them and make them obey. Eventually the kid gets tuckered out and a friend takes him back to his room. Next day, asks him about the dream, and he says, it wasn't a dream. Before I came here I was important, and my dragons came to find me, but they won't listen anymore because I'm little. When asked to draw his dragons, he drew horned stick figures of humans with webbed wings. On Christmas Day years ago, my son had just turned three. We went to my aunt's house as she was hosting the day for my dad's side of the family. My dad passed away when I was fifteen. So, my son parked himself at the front door and wouldn't come get food or join in. He then comes to get my aunt and I, and says we have to open the door because the man wants to come in. We thought it was imagination, but he got agitated and said, the tall man wants to come in. Then he ran to the living room and pointed at a photo of my dad. I had never explained to him that my dad had died or shown him photos or anything. And my dad was sitting in the photo, no indication he was tall, six feet four inches. So, we opened the door for a few minutes just in case. Years ago, we were at a gathering at a friend's house. It was in the evening and starting to get dark. As the kids started heading inside the house, my niece, about three to four at the time, mentioned she saw some soldiers outside. Mind you, this was out in the sticks in the upstate of South Carolina and not much development of any kind around besides peach fields and cow pastures. Creepy thing is, Cowpens National Battlefield, site of a 1791 American Revolution battle, was only a few miles down the road. Same house, but maybe some months later. It was around 10 p.m. and I was alone and walking up the driveway to my friend's house when I heard my name called from the darkness. It sounded similar to my friend's voice and so I answered and took a few steps towards it thinking it was my friend but stopped because something just fell off. I felt super creeped out. I went inside and my friend was in his room. No one had been outside at all. When I was 12, we lived with my auntie, uncle and younger cousins who were seven, five and three. I had to share a bed with the three-year-old. She was a really smart little kid, a big vocabulary for her age and an imagination to match. One night we were lying in bed and suddenly she started crying and pointing at the corner of the room, furthest from us, the only light was the streetlights outside. I spoke. What's wrong Jay? What's there? I wasn't able to see anything, not even a spider, which I thought it was. My baby cousin said through tears. The witches are looking at us, they are mean. I was freaking out inside by this time as I still couldn't see anything, so I asked her. How many witches can you see Jay? She answered still crying in my arms, there are three, and they are coming. I started to feel slightly unnerved by this 
as obviously none of my baby cousins were allowed to watch scary films programs or listen to scary stories, especially at three, so this came unexpected. All I could do at this time was to distract my baby cousin by telling her I wouldn't let the mean witches get her and singing her nursery rhymes until she fell asleep in my arms, I didn't sleep at all that night. My cousin is now a beautiful, successful teacher with a gorgeous one-year-old girl herself and like a lot of people we talk about our childhood. She remembers a lot of the things we did together, but she never remembers that night. My brother and I were doing the plumbing for a family friend. Really rough neighborhood, really rough house. The family didn't speak English, they were from Mexico but spoke an indigenous language I can't name so we couldn't even get by on my terrible Spanish. The oldest girl, like Eleven, is our translator. The plumbing is a mess, we have to squeeze through this little hole in the floor to do the work, there are rats everywhere, and the hours start wearing on us. We get a little loopy and we start our jokes. I start meowing every time I'm going into the crawl space to trick the rats and then my brother starts going look out. I'm a cat. When he climbs in. Jokes go on to the idea of painting on whiskers, etc. The little girl hears us and is confused. She wants to know what we're scared of. My brother, in his way, tells this kid that there's a baby down there. That it crawls around really fast. And has red eyes. He said it so quickly and confidently that I didn't have a chance to interrupt him. This was not something he should say to a kid who will have to keep living in that house long after we're gone. Her face dropped and she looked down the hole and I got sick to my stomach because I knew his story was too far. Her posture stiffened, she turned and looked me right in the eyes, and with a voice of authority and barely restrained glee she said to me, catch it for me. When my son was three, he was in bed for a few hours and started screaming. Gave me goosebumps, ran into his bedroom and he leapt into my arms. I asked him what he was afraid of, and he said there was a creepy thing with red eyes staring at him through the window. There was nothing I could see, but I was unnerved because he was such a chill kid. He never had sleep issues, never woke up in the night after he was tucked in. He didn't want to go back to sleep, so I got my hairspray and told him it was monster spray to keep it away from our house. I slept next to him the rest of the night. It gave me the hereby genies. My youngest would often tell me about her other grandma called Dut who had purple hair and glasses. One day she was telling me that Dut loved the area we live, she was three and I had no idea she knew the name of the area, but that they'd had a wonderful time in France, we're in the UK. Again, I didn't know she knew what France was, and asked me if I'd like for her, my youngest, to show me where she, dot, lived. So, I was like, sure, why not? So, we started walking in a direction we'd never taken before, and she was babbling away the entire time. She stopped in the street and her eyes kind of glazed a bit and she said, she was here, but she's gone now. Let's go to nursery, and just turn to walk towards her nursery. We were standing outside of the funeral home. I may or may not have had a short bout of internal screaming on the way to nursery that day. When my son was three, he very solemnly looked at me one morning while we were still in bed and said, Daddy, in 100 days we will all be dead. My logical mind told me he was just saying that in a long time we would all be dead, and 100 days was the longest time frame his little mind could conjure up. The rest of me counted out 100 days from then, July 14, 2021, I still remember, and made sure to drive very carefully that day. I'm a nanny. About 15 years ago, I took the kid I was watching on a play date. The kid we were visiting gave me a big hug and said, I remember when you were my mom. Then Uncle Danny killed you. The kids went off to play and the mother and I just looked at each other. She said, he says the strangest things sometimes. My friend's kid was three when this happened to me. They asked me to babysit him so they could go on a date. When I got to their house, 
they said he wouldn't come out of his room and wouldn't tell them why. I knocked on his door and asked him to come in. When he said okay, I walked in, and he was staring up at a corner of the ceiling above the door. I asked, Avery, are you okay? He looked very fearful and said, the green man doesn't like you. I immediately felt a chill run down my back because the tone in his voice sounded so much deeper than he normally talked. I asked, the green man? And he nodded and pointed to the corner. I turned to look but didn't see anything. His parents were behind me at this point, and I heard his mom Brittany gasp when he pointed. I turned to her and asked, do you know what he's talking about? She nodded and gestured to me to follow them into their bedroom, where she and her husband Jerry told me the two of them had had a shared nightmare a few days before about a green creature that told them it was coming for their son. I have never had a paranormal experience, never seen a ghost or a UFO, as far as I know. But the skin on my neck got really cold and I thought I felt something brushing against me. I asked what precautions they took, if any, and they said none. But, after that night, they called in a holy person who they said, cleansed, the house with sage and incense, and they never had another visit from the green man, as far as I know. I lost touch with them a few years ago but I always wonder about that night. Many years ago, I was a nanny to two kids aged three and seven. One day we took the bus to the park a couple of suburbs over, which took us past the cemetery. While stopped at lights, the kids were looking out the window at the cemetery, and the three-year-old says, I hate that place. Her brother immediately snapped back with, well we're not there anymore, so shut up about it, whereupon she shivers and says, it was so cold down there. 31 years later and it still lives rent-free in my brain. I used to do this with the monsters under the bed when my kids were little. I didn't use a broom, though. I'd dive under the bed, grab the monster, beat them up a bit, because we don't let people stay in this house without permission and I'm the scariest thing in this house, I'd give it a stern talking to about how rude it is just to move into people's homes and decide you were living under the bed without so much as a please or thank you and then I'd chuck them out the window. My kids would be laughing their heads off by the time I yelled, and stay out. They're getting big now but still tell my mate's kids that they don't need to worry about monsters under the bed because mom can sort them out. I was born without my left leg and my mom and dad said the very first sentence I ever said was me and my friend Jesus picked this one leg body. At the time, my parents had never taken me to church but after that they believed. I have always known I was meant to have this body, it is so weird, but I have zero doubts about his existence and really had no idea what church even was at the time. I'm not using this to evangelize it is just my story as I believe much of the Bible and who he is has been corrupted by people who use it as judgmental weapons to use against people and the Jesus I know is about loving each other plain and simple and about lessons. People tell me all the time that I am one of the most positive people they know. I feel no pity for myself, I have been blessed more than I can count and wouldn't change it for the world. Believe kids when they say things because they are usually more in touch with the spiritual realm than most of us are also have the heart of a child, the world is beautiful when you do. I usually say I'm an atheist. Yet I clearly feel there is more than science has explained. One thing I feel more than anything else is that the story of Jesus and the New Testament of the Bible is pure love at its core. I suspect there is more to the book than we know yet I don't think it is what the megachurches claim. I find myself truly hoping these days. Your comment was nice to read, and it sounds like you're pretty amazing and have overcome a lot of adversity. I wish you luck in your lessons and I am happy to hear you understand love is the point of it all. Sending all my love from my tiny corner of existence. My five-year-old sister looked in her bedroom closet one day saw a bearded man who glowed green, hated her closet, called him taboo, and refused to open it because taboo is in there. Two-year-old brother. No one was talking. We were watching TV. He looked up at the ceiling and said I don't want to talk to you right now. 
four-year-old daughter, looked out her bedroom window and asked me who the tall man was, looking inside, there was no one out there. Eight-year-old son woke up in the middle of the night screaming, crying, and melting down. Two days before Christmas. Said he saw a woman in a dress at his door with white frizzy hair, my grandmother had just passed shortly before that. She had cancer and treatment caused her hair to fall out and it turned into a rat's nest. I'm 100% positive kids can see things we can't. Years ago, we lived in a Victorian house. My six-year-old was in his room. I came upstairs and could hear him talking. He said he was talking to the old lady that used to live there and she is genuinely nice and tells him bedtime stories at night. I looked around and he said she was gone right now. She is a ghost and died a long time ago. He is 30 and still remembers this lady. Not scary but odd. My daughter was three or four at the time. Unexpectedly she casually mentioned, Cousin Mason broke his arm. A few weeks later, speaking on the phone to my SIL, it came up that Mason had had a bike accident and had broken his arm. There's no way my daughter learned of his accident by we live many states away from family and our contact is infrequent. My sister and I are six years apart in age and I'm the oldest. When she was about three years old, she told me that she could talk to God and see ghosts which totally freaked me out. In my young mind, my sister looked like a creepy doll at that age. Her skin was porcelain white, and she had longish black hair that often covered her face. Our parents kind of sucked and often left me home alone with my sister while they went out for walks or to run errands. I remember one time she was in my parents' bedroom sitting on their bed. No TV turned on, just sitting, staring blankly at a wall. I asked her what she was doing, and she said, the spirits are with me, and God just told me a joke, then she turned and looked at me and started laughing. It really freaked me out, so I shoved her and told her to stop it. She immediately stopped laughing and told me that the spirits didn't like that I was being mean to her, and they were going to punish me. I was seriously terrified. We can laugh about it now but that was definitely the scariest thing a child has ever said to me. I take my son to preschool usually and there is a boy there we shall call him Jock. I was sitting outside at the building table making things with the wood hammer nails act. Jock kept talking about himself in the third person saying Jock doesn't like this and that and I thought it was strange, so I started asking him questions like where is Jock? He said Jock's not here. I said if he's not here then who are you? He just said nothing and gave me the creepiest look. Some weird stuff I reckon. My son was about three or four years old and he was playing with toy cars on the kitchen floor driving him around the tile and he happens to look up in a spare bedroom and he says, oh they're doing it again, I said, who's doing what, what are you talking about, she then says, they're looking right at us, and I was a little weirded out by the situation and he can feel my frustration he told me, mom don't get mad at them they're just old and tired. My five years told me today after I picked her up. Liv is her doll. My daughter, EY dad did you hang out with Liv while we were gone? Me, I sure did, she starts questioning her doll. My daughter, hi Liv what did you and dad do? Oh you guys fed the dogs together? I fed the dogs. I never mentioned it to her. I fed them earlier than their regular schedule, I thought maybe a good guess. My daughter, it's because her spirit lives inside the doll dad. She got out the doll to go feed the dogs with you. I have been a critical care nurse for 21 years and have worked in several facilities, many of which have been large, terribly busy trauma centers. Very few things startle me anymore, as I have seen so much that I can almost predict any situation. A few months ago, I had a young boy check in to be evaluated in the ER. He was having great difficulty breathing and was very pale. All my ER nurse spidey sense told me that this kid was in grave danger. As he gasped, he managed to tell me, I think I'm going to die. 
Patients who are in immediate danger of death often experience what we refer to as impending doom. When they have this, they often tell us they feel like they're going to die. And every single time, I have always believed these patients because they were frequently right. I have never worked so fast, and it was an immensely stressful situation. However, we were able to stabilize him very quickly. Thank God for that. At this point in my career, there are only a few situations that will always stand out in my memory, this is definitely one of them. I was the creepy kid. It was one evening during summer break, before I went into 8th grade. We were going to swim in our pool, so my dad came with me and my siblings while my mom stayed in the house. As I went to jump in the pool, I ran past my dad and said, oh, Papa died. A few minutes later my mom got the call from my grandma that he had passed. I actually was just talking to my family about it last weekend and they said they remember it too and my sister confirmed I'm a weirdo. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.